Welcome to New Day Northwest. A new exhibit at Bellevue Arts Museum examines our culture's relationship, maybe even addiction to plastic. Hidden in plain sight is the work of Seattle artist Maria Phillips, and it features works with single-use plas plastics. In the art installations, Phillips questions the need for these objects, reminders of what she calls the excesses of consumer society. I think we all see ourselves in there at some point, even you, and all she's with time, me now. Yep. So and let's that, talk about your residency at, at the Recology Materials Recovery Center and how that formed an inspiration for you. And I love that because it is a resource recovery. So they're really trying to find ways to place these materials, reuse these mm -hmm. materials. So the residency is a five month program where two artists have a studio and find their, get to walk through and select materials in that giant Oh pile, gosh. yeah. So that's two hundred and fifty thousand tons of a day of amazing. material comes look, through. I mean, so these things at scale. When we look at that, that's exactly. all the stuff that you know we thought. Oh, I know I shouldn't do this, but then it goes in the trash and it shows up there. Okay, so now you have an exhibit called yes, Hidden in Plain yes. Sight. We're going to see some of that, but tell me about it. What we'll see if we go so to after the Bellevue Arts Museum. What you'll see, after the, rec after the recology, I decided to turn the culling and the selecting on myself and my family. So for a year, I collected all of our single-use and non-recyclable materials and then turned them into a large exhibition. And um, you saw all the bags, the sort of waterfall, right. and that continues as a giant wave of our snack bags and our all oh. the packaging materials all of the um, food labels and containers. So it's really, it's interesting to think about what we're wrapping our food in mm -hmm. and what, and, and like you said, it's hard to escape. You go to the grocery store and it's like, what? And what? things are Where? already packaged or, you know, maybe they don't want to use your materials to put things in. Um, it's just, it's really hard even when we're conscious of it and these exhibits help us. Show us some of the things you've brought today that you, and you, they're, okay, they're color, -coded, is, I'm, uh, color coded almost by the way you've organized them, which is kind of interesting. Which is, I know, which is funny because it is sort of this horrific beauty, all these plastics. Such so, a good way to put it. I know, and it's, these were all collected off of various beaches throughout the world that I've traveled to. So I did a major beach cleanup in the uh, most southern point of Hawaii with a group and um, collected a lot of these, but then like some of India, Miami, Canada, they're all wow. in there. And um, you know, what, what I was really interested in and learned from in Hawaii is, you know, fish bites. Yes. That's a fish eating that plastic. So we're always talking about, you know, it's it's coming around. It's coming into us. It's going you know into going fish, into the fish, going and into the natural it. realm. So this is where you know the the materials. This is super flimsy. So I'm going to let you. You know we've got a cloth here mixing with sea sponge. So we're creating all of these new ecosystems. And you'll see that at the exhibit as well, where there's these collisions of the man-made and the natural right. world. So, None of which is good for the natural world, as it turns no, out. No, and then not good for us. No. In the end, yes, if we don't care about one, we right, need to care about right. the other. And so you've collected these. You will probably use these in an yes, art exhibit yes. in the future. So what have you learned? As, as I look at this, I see little parts of things that I use, you know, right. the tops of bottles. Exactly. The, you know. And then who knows what these were, you know, or here's your, here's your, regular yeah part of know, a squirt, squirt, bottle, squirt bottle and you, you can know. see there's a little world growing in there wow. starting in there um, I think that for me it's really paying attention all of this material makes me think twice when I go shopping do I need that how can I refill that what's another option right. there are so many new companies that are coming up that can really move us away from plastic all of my laundry detergent my dishwasher um, Let's see, my hand soaps, all those things I refill. And I have subscriptions. My toilet paper comes to me. I mean, that was one thing that was, you know, the casing for the toilet paper right. that I bought for the a family boxes. of four. Exactly. So, um, and we can get away from that without even changing our lives very much. No, no. That part's and it's, pretty and easy. And I think what's really important is it's take small steps. You cannot do this overnight and you can't beat yourself up about it. But when I go to the grocery store, I try to go for aluminum cans or glass or, um, you know, I don't use bags. I take no plastic if I can, and um, last night I came home with two pieces of plastic. 
Yes. <laughs> you know, which, which for a two family is much of four, better. two is much yeah, better. two is much better. It's not perfect and it's not, So you where know. did you start when you began noticing this? Because I want all of us to kind of look at this and see ourselves as, In it. you know, I mean, as look, we can. Caps, caps, caps. Yep, those, loads of caps right, and things like those that. Those are going straight to the landfill because there's no, they're too small for the system to pick up. And so I'm putting that in my recycling, but it's not getting recycled. The is best that what you're thing saying? to do with this is same material on same material. So always empty it out, dry it, clean and dry, screw that lid back on. That way the whole object will get recycled. Okay, very so good all tip. the water bottles, all of the laundry detergents, all that stuff. Now, if you've got a glass bottle and a plastic lid, into the trash. The plastic lid's got to go into the trash. Okay. Or into my work. <laughs> or into your work. Or Maybe we should work. start a pile just for right, you. Right, exactly. And so if we could do one thing, let's say today, one thing um, that this work would remind us of, what could we do? What was the, what's the easiest thing that you did that everybody could do no matter how conscious they are about this? I got a to-go cup and I don't allow myself to buy coffee unless I have my cup. I do not buy water bottles, single-use water bottles. I'm with you on that one. It's completely. tricky, and it's—I mean, I'm not going to say never because it happens. But then I reuse it, and I try to take care of it and carry it with me. Yeah. If um, because we're so lucky here in the Northwest with our recycling and our composting, if I find that I you know, can't throw it away properly or this or that, I pack it out. I take it with me until I can. Very good. Those so are great little, things for us to remember. Little tips. We can do that. Let's stop with the water bottles and bring our bags and do it Just today. Just think about it. it. Yeah, and I do challenge it, everybody. I challenge you to give yourself a week to try and Save your plastic, save those things, pay attention, or even right. document it in your phone and just see what does that look like at the end of the week. That'd be a good project. Yeah. And once you see that, it's sort of like food waste. You just, it's oh, emblazoned in your oh, mind. Oh, we'll talk about that another, another, day. Yes, yes, another, another day. day. Thank you so much. Hidden in Plain Sight, a Bellevue Arts Museum runs through March of 2020. You can find all the details and tickets on our website. And when we come back, my friend Terry Holloman and I will try discussing the Seahawks game. We promise to find some bright spots after this. We'll be right back.